this content is for kids. It's not for kids. No, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If you return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're yes. watching Septum Sin vs. the World. I'm Septum Sin. This is Kotobuki J. Hey! And we're here to show you what they got. Yeah! So, they got some stuff this week. Yeah, I am. And I realize I better put my, uh, fo my uh, phone on vibrate oh, because it's going to go off because somebody posted baby pictures in our group uh, and that always gets the cursory everybody's got to yes. go oh cute baby so yeah. um any case we've got one bit of news hmm. there yeah. is gundam yeah gundam reconquista ng movie part one Part one of a movie? Or I'm guessing it's a, a, a movie series. This seems to be a... And a as usual, they have like a special edition and all that stuff. Because, you know, if you want to collect Gundam, you know, I could say... You know, almost I could think of this entire library here could be Gundam almost. It, just, <laughs> it, is the way it, it couldn't really, but you could probably fill like one of these shelves. Like one, like right. one of the... Like you know, one of these straight shelves, not the full thing with, right. with a gun with all the Gundam. Hmm. Of course, if you got the big sets, you could probably fill multiple shelves with that. Mm -hmm. So that's the Gundam. But there's also quite a bit to talk about. Oh yeah. So why don't we show you that beautiful movie footage? All right. Well, since I let us off with the Gundam, go mm -hmm. ahead, throw us out some. I'm going to lead off with one of the greatest 
most classic, most essential anime ever made. A wonderful, good-hearted, charming little show, you know, for kids. Called Bludgeoning Angel Dokoro-chan. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is not a family-friendly series. Not in the least. Discotech, I believe, is releasing it. I can't remember who originally released it. Do we have a... Do you have a copy? Well, <clears throat> whatever. Yeah, I uh, do have a copy. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm trying to remember who originally released it. But it's a... Uh, I felt like it was uh, the same people. Uh, it'd be under B for bludgeoning. Right. right. But, uh, here, uh, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Here we go, and you can put up the visual on screen. Yeah, was, yeah. This is the initial anime works was the original release. So, you have Dokoro-chan right there, and you see the halo. She is an angel sent by God to kill this dude because at some point in the unspecified future, he somehow creates a... <laughs> was it a serum or something... De de prevents women from aging past 12, yes. I think was the, the age. So she is sent back in time to end him. <laughs> and she does, repeatedly, in very bloody fashion, with this horrid-looking club, and then promptly brings him back to life. Because in typical anime fashion, for some reason she likes the guy, and just can't bring herself to kill him for good. Just lots of times otherwise. <laughs> lots of times otherwise. And she has a wonderful little chant that she does every it's time. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one that does it. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, other angels are involved and uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's a fun show. It's an absurd show. It's a violent and bloody show. <laughs> and it's nice that it's coming back into print. <laughs> Well, I didn't do my homework with uh, usually mm. pulling the extras. There's not a lot of them this right. time because a lot of the ones you have, I have stuff that's related to right. them, but not what's releasing. And we have a lot of new releases this week. But uh, so. yeah. while you're talking about your next one, I'll pull mm -hmm. the other okay. two that I do have. Okay. But um, the other one was right, right next to me. So I was like, <laughs> you know. So I got this with the nice slipcover, Tammy and the T-Rex, as you can mm -hmm. see. The embossed cover and the that is a nice, nice cover, cover, yes, for for that movie. So this is what's releasing for Tammy and the T Rex, mm -hmm. and of course, it's basically this without the cover. Um, it's more expensive than what I paid hmm. for the limited edition, but hmm. still, it's kind of cool to see it. I want it to be in the mainstream because crazy crap like this. <laughs> <laughs> needs to be in the mainstream. It's about a woman whose boyfriend becomes a T-Rex. That That's just right there. Perfection. I can't do much better. That's that's the best that we can do for film. <laughs> Was his name Teddy Rex or Tom Rex or something like Teddy that? Teddy Rexman. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> no. That's not his name. But <laughs> anyway... Uh, another anime coming out in a long line of reboots, revisits, uh, re-releases, what have you. This has been a not just Hollywood, but it seems to be almost a worldwide thing at the moment. Lots of people are going back to that well. There was a little old show from, I don't believe, about the time Dokoro-chan came out that I've never seen, but I think he's seen it. Um, that was pretty well known. It was called Boogie Pop Phantom. And there was a live action movie, which he gave to me and I still haven't watched, uh, called Boogie Pop and Others. And there's a relatively recent series where they went back to that well and decided to revamp it. And they called the new series Boogie Pop and Others. And I believe Funimation is releasing it this week. Um, I think, yeah, it looks yeah. like a Funimation release. But um, and You know more about the series than I do, no. but I know enough to know this looks interesting, and I want to give it a go. The live action was not that interesting, <laughs> but the um, 
But the series is, it was a fairly good and intense series. I do mm -hmm. look forward to uh, trying to get this eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the things we discussed today would probably, if not been on his list, would be on mine. Mm -hmm. So, and some of the, and some the opposite. So, yeah. still, maybe not Tammy and the T-Rex. Though... I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> they could do that for movies galore. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> But any case, I bet you Dustin would be all about that. One. Actually, I'm sure if we got a uh, if we had a theme that allowed me to submit it, it probably would win a vote ah. uh, for our viewers on that show. Mm -hmm. But you know, it is a cool series. I'm curious. It can't mm -hmm. be any worse than the live action was. Hmm. So I'm definitely willing to try. Speaking of. <laughs> Uh, Galaxy Express 999 Eternal Fantasy is getting a release on Blu-ray. Now, of course, this is an upgrade. Uh, Eastern Star did do an, a release of this movie not long ago, which I have and I've seen. Um, this actually is the sequel to the uh, Galaxy Express uh, 999, the uh, original one there. Hmm. And uh, actually, sorry, the, this is the third in the series. I feel like it was supposed to set up more and then didn't follow up. This is the one I felt was lacking. Hmm. Out of the three movies, this is the one I, I like the least. Hmm. I really look forward to seeing them. Like, I think it's Discotech that, or something related is doing a go, another go at the uh, series. Mm -hmm. And again, the first part's releasing. But we'll see if the second part makes it out. All right. If it all gets out... I'll be curious. I'll definitely buy that series and because uh, I want to see it and see how that stacks up to the movies. Okay. It's a pretty good series, though. I mean, if, if you haven't gotten to see them, the movies are a good way to get all the story mm -hmm. quick. All right. So, another one where they went back to the well is one that I really don't know much about this particular one. I've only seen the movie. Um which I believe was called Requiem, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So I, there's I, I, I there's a series from way back when called Sayuki. And I've seen the movie, which I believe is called Requiem, but I do own the original series. Yeah. But there's also, a, uh, I believe, a sequel called Sayuki Relo Reload, Reload yeah. and now Sayuki Reload Blast. Blast is getting an Essentials release from Funimation. So, I'll be curious. I know Sentai for a while has owned the license to the first series and has been selling it. If you look at per episode count, they've been selling it dirt cheap. So, I think I got my copy like 14 bucks or something for, what is it, a 56 episode series? Yeah, that's what I got it's mine something for. Like, yeah, so, interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want to see the problem. The is movie was fun. I don't want to do the third se the third season without getting the second season, right. and I'm confused about that one as to mm -hmm. what constitutes what and mm -hmm. where to get it. But if you get the separate, mm -hmm. the separate stuff for the second season, that is the one with the Criterion release, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. It's a logical one. So mm -hmm. you know, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, one thing I do know is that a very important milestone is being reached. It has been a long time mm. since Lupin the Third Part Two first had an American release, mm. where they released half the series on individual DVDs mm. and stopped. Mm. You know, because. Because. Well, it's a long series. It's and over people, 100 episodes. And people <laughs> got tired of buying them. What was it, four episode? Uh, yeah, they three were episodes? very, like, it's like very small episode yeah. uh, runs. That adds up when you got 100 plus uh, episodes. Yeah. So, we actually started off with Eastern Star slash Discotech uh, releasing all of those DVDs in this. So that's the. It's, this is the second season. The first season has been out, and the fourth season's been out. Still haven't seen the third season, but who knows? Maybe they'll pick it up after this. Mm -hmm. Then we also didn't know whether this was going to continue. Mm -hmm. There was a large possibility that we were going to just get this. 
<laughs> but then they said, well, we don't have enough money to justify the release. But they did manage to scrape up enough to do the final release without the English dub. And, of course, we got part three. Never before released on physical mm -hmm. media in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to finally get part four and complete this gem. Matter of fact, this is probably the series that many of you would have seen on Cartoon Network when it was airing, if I recall correctly. Hmm. Uh, it has, I mean, shoot, even with these two being the ones that were out, mm -hmm. we're still looking at 79 episodes, mm -hmm. which is not a small chunk. Right. So, you know, it's a pretty small, I mean, pretty big chunk. Right now it's 117. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we still got one more of these to go. I'm very much looking forward to it. It'll mm. be great to complete it. It's going to be awesome. Ah. Speaking of things that are going to be awesome, this week sees not one, but two Criterion releases. And they're both truly deserving Criterion films. And I am very excited because I don't have either one in my collection. So these will be part of my July pickups, I guarantee you. Um, the first is 1964's Failsafe. Ah. Which, of course, is based on the very, uh, supposedly very disturbing book uh, that... Actually, I'm trying to remember the provenance of that one, but I feel like it's the same source material as Dr. Strangelove. But this is a more um, serious take on the subject matter. But you have a really, really, really phenomenal cast. You got Dan O'Herlihy, Walter Matthau, Edward Benz, Fritz Weaver, Henry Fonda, My goodness. Larry Hagman, uh, Dom DeLuise. I mean, you got he has a hell of a cast. Sidney Lumet film. You know, one of his most famous films, actually. Uh, that, I, I'm excited about this. It's a uh, this is a film that, of course, has been remade a couple times. There was a recent-ish television version that was very well received that I still need to see. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's a bonus feature on this. That would be so yeah. awesome. <laughs> but uh, I didn't really get to see what the bonus features were. But again, this is one I do need. Uh, basically, um, IMDb lists, American planes are sent to deliver a nuclear attack on Moscow. But it's a mistake due to an electrical malfunction. So yeah, it's the it same thing in, in some ways. Yes. <laughs> so um, I do want to see this, and I'm excited mm -hmm. about the Criterion release. We need a cowboy to ride the bomb all the way down. No, I mean Peter Sellers. One of the mm -hmm. only things missing from that cast. I mean, yeah, you know. really. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of great cinema, uh huh. Uh, bo bo bo, bo 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 is releasing on... It's a Tim Fall collection. Blu-ray. And a nice teeny set. This is kind of cool. It's a cool re-release. Mm -hmm. I actually have interest in this. I put this up for an upgrade because mm -hmm. it has the... It has a good subtitle track oh. and it has the full-on Japanese. Hmm. So, you can actually get it in its full glory and you mm. can pare it down. Now, the series I have here is out of print, mm -hmm. uh, but I am glad I got this, which is uh, these two, some more entertainment. They actually did do half of Galaxy Express 999 and then quit. Um, they ran out of money when they were going into the anime business. Of course, Bobo Bo is probably not the best one to start off with, mm -hmm. considering that Bobo Bo is strange. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you look how thick this is. Four, four of them, only one of those worth. I think mm -hmm. that would be, you know, be worthwhile. Right. But uh, it's essentially about this guy who is a master of hair. Fist of the nose hair. And uh, mm -hmm. there's this evil tyrant that's bald. So he wants everybody else to be bald. So he's having everybody's hair shaved off. And he is the protector who will save all the hair. 
And, uh, you know, it's a strange enough concept as it is. Mm -hmm. But the series has very little coherence as it runs. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it is so incoherent, it kind of leaves you going, huh? <laughs> a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But it is a fun series. I really love the series. I like chaos, and this is chaos personified. <laughs> so I can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, I don't have any money. But I will mm -hmm. get. Uh, but I will save up money for this particular one. Eventually, I will get it. Mm -hmm. All right. My next up is another one. The main reason this one is not yet in my collection is because there was a really great Pedro Omodovar collection released a while back, and I wanted to get it, and I wanted to get it, and I wanted to get it, and I never got it, and now it's out of print. And I probably put off a lot of his films because of that set. But now that this is getting a Criterion release, oh hell, I'm getting a Criterion release. <laughs> and that is one of Almodovar's most lauded <laughs> films, which, if I recall the title correctly, is Todo Sobre Mi Madre, which is all about my mother. And it is a film from 1999 that co stars Cecilia Roth, Marisa Paredes, Candela Pena. Penelope Cruz, and a number of other folks, and written and directed by Pedro Madovar. Young Esteban wants to become a writer and also to discover the identity of his second mother, a trans woman, carefully concealed by his mother, Manuela. Um, I have only seen the film once years ago, but I am a big fan of Omodovar. I'm a big fan of Penelope Cruz. I have loved the work they've done together. I was impressed by this film when I saw it. And again, I'm hoping most of his films get Criterion releases, so I am more than willing to support anyone that comes out as it comes along. So, yep. Well, I'm very conflicted about hmm. this release. Hmm. One, we talked about a, an excellent pickup I had, uh, you know, a slightly expensive series mm -hmm. called Monogatari. Now, from what I have, the story is done. Hmm. But no, no, it's not. They got to do an epilogue. Of course. And that is Zoku Owari Monogatari. Which does, like, a, you know, it's a full-on epilogue series. Now, I think it's the only... I think this is it. I think after this, it's done. There are many people out there <laughs> clamoring, we want more. We want it to keep going on forever. And I'm like, no. I want it to end. Because it's like 100 to $160 a, a, a part. It's pricey. It's very pricey. I want this to be the end. Of course, these are the same people who believe that Shippuden ended too soon and should have kept going on uh, for Infinity. So, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I finally finished the Naruto manga and I think it went long enough. So you don't think it should have gone on for like a, another like 10 years or so? Well, that's what Boruto's for. <laughs> I mean, I like the idea of saying Naruto's story is finished but we will keep him in a generational saga. I like the idea of going to the next generation. Yeah. You really don't need a whole lot more in that one story. And I'm sure it's the same with Monogatari. I mean, they'll probably, a few years down the road, come up with a related story. Yeah, and they go could definitely do that. Mm, yeah. Uh, theoretically, Katana Gatari, mm -hmm. though it's not related, it is related mm -hmm. at the same time by the same author anyway. Mm -hmm. So, it is interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to... And it was a good story, mm -hmm. but I felt like they did an excellent job wrapping it up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get a story and it's wrapped up. If you keep going on after that, it just kind of feels aimless. Yeah. Like, like Black Butler Season 2. Um, I mean, well, that I, was huh. beyond aimless. I mean, I think they, they, they should have made their decision by the end of the first season and said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll just keep going with the manga. Huh. Instead of, we're going to wrap it up and then we're just going to kind of throw out stuff at random. 
or worse, Negema. Well, we're just going to throw <sighs> random pieces <laughs> afterwards. Well, they never did one that really wrapped up the story. I mean, the first anime has a conclusion, but it's completely anime original and makes no sense in the mm. greater context. But... <laughs> And that one, they stopped in the middle of a storyline to create yeah. that ending. <sighs> so, yeah. anyway. But, you know, flawed, but still right. good. Still fun. Black Butler Season 2, not good. Not so much. All right. Go <laughs> so, my next one, my last two that I'm going to be doing have an interesting thing in common in <laughs> their all, they're kind of two sides of the coin. There were two films that were frequently spoken about, bandied about, thought of, highly ranked in last year's awards discussion. They were both considered strong Oscar contenders, one much more than the other. Mm -hmm. One ended up slightly overperforming against people's expectations with the nominations. The other one got left out in the cold, totally shut out. Um, so that one is a little film called Motherless Brooklyn, which I did not realize, and I was very pleasantly surprised to just find out, is the second film directed by Edward Norton. Uh, I saw, I don't know, do you ever see Keeping the Faith? No. He did a little old film 20 years ago almost, I think, well, about 19 years ago, called Keeping the Faith, where he plays a Catholic priest, Ben Stiller plays a Jewish rabbi, and they're both in love with a girl played by Jenna Elfman. It was a lovely little film. It showed a huge influence of Woody Allen uh, in the way he did the film. It was just a little romantic comedy that was really fun, and nobody saw it. No one cared about it. Heart of Mine should have been an Oscar nominee for original song, damn it. Um, so Motherless Brooklyn apparently is much darker and grittier. It's more of a cop drama, from what I understand. But it was widely talked up in a lot of ways. It also features Norton in a starring role, but also look at this cast. Guga Mabatha Raw. Alec Baldwin, Bobby Cannavale, Willem Dafoe, Bruce Willis, Ethan Suple, uh, Fisher Stevens, Leslie Mann. I mean, that's a pretty impressive cast right there, too. Um, and it was um, actually another influence that um, Keeping the Faith had was Milos <laughs> Forman, who Norton worked with on... Um, and, Foreman actually had one of his very few acting roles in the film, which is interesting. Um, but anyway, so this one I have heard very little about. I just heard a lot of people talking about it as this should have been nominated. This one got snubbed. This one, you know. Mm. But now that I'm seeing that's an Ed Norton film, it is definitely on my list. That cast, that's an yeah. incredible cast. And I'm just really curious to see where this one's going. Uh, and I want to find out if it is a multiple snub, like people are saying. <laughs> well, this is a big month for anime, or at least mm -hmm. the end of the month is. Right. I mean, I don't know if you would consider Boba Bo, but, uh, <laughs> you know, the Lupin yeah. release. The yeah. Galaxy Express release, in a lot of senses, because it is... It is an important mm -hmm. series, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to history of anime. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoku Monogatari, as much as I dislike the fact that it keeps going, I feel like that's the, I believe that's the end. Mm -hmm. And if that's the end, mm -hmm. that is the end of a, an amazing series. Mm -hmm. So we continue, though, with a series called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which mm -hmm. is not as bizarre as Boba Bo. Matter of fact, it's very down to earth compared to Bobo. Bo. Now, is this a sequel to uh, Jojo Rabbit? No. <laughs> <laughs> Though it, it does hey, like foo. it does like very muscly men. <laughs> and uh, you know, essentially, the original one is about this. Uh, well, about the this guy named Jojo, mm -hmm. and, uh, Jonathan Joestar, mm -hmm. and uh, his uh, well, his adopted brother Dio. Oh, sorry, dude. Uh, Dio is the bad guy for several parts of the series. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on, Joe... And there's always something related to this vampire stuff. Mm -hmm. Jojo 
or Jonathan Joestar keeps coming back in different incarnations, like his grandson, his great grandson, and so on. Mm -hmm. and that's how the series continues. Hmm. Now, this is the fifth release of this series, mm -hmm. uh, and they have such beautiful releases. Mm. I mean, uh, you've seen you've seen oh, what yeah. they look like. I mean, that's just actually I'll show you. I think Viz is having fun with these. <laughs> they really are. They are. They're expensive. Yeah, this is an expensive month. But mm -hmm. I mean, you can see as I take out my Kaona postcard by accident. If you can see, see how beautiful that is. Yeah. I mean, here it is. But like, this is just the first series. It's the only one I've seen so far. Uh, the second season is the one that most people talk about, mm -hmm. which Stardust Crusaders. But look at that. I mean, it's a, it's very mm -hmm. solid. It comes with a booklet inside. These are just solid, so limited sets. Booklet. And uh, this is the fifth uh, one. I've got the first four. So... Yeah, it's pretty cool sets. Do you think this is kind of like you were talking about it's sort of a vampire kind of thing? Is this supposed to be sort of like a, a coffin opening on the hinge? Hmm, maybe. Huh. But again, I look forward hmm. to getting that next one. Hmm. It is one of the few I'm trying to collect all in special edition. Mm -hmm. Sailor Moon was one of those, and I mm -hmm. have managed to until the movie comes out, and then mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's going to be good once I finally uh, once they finally end it. I don't know how many more seasons there are left in it, but still, I look forward to it. I need to watch the next bit. Right. <laughs> so my last one tonight is a big one, big, big, big one. I'm super excited about it. Super, super excited about the release. I love it. I love it, and it got a lot of praise. I got six Oscar nominations, and uh, I may be getting this wrong, but I do believe it's called Gisain Chung. <laughs> And it is also known as Parasite, the film from Bong Joon-ho. Uh, Bong Joon-ho is nominated for Best Director, Best Picture, and Best Original Screenplay. <coughs> yeah. he three nominations in one go. It's pretty damn good. And the film is also up for uh, editing, uh, production design, which two particularly surprising nods mm -hmm. and then of course international feature they've done away with that whole foreign language feature now they're calling it international feature it yeah. is the film to beat although it is up against an Almodovar film that's gotten tons and tons of praise uh, pain and glory but uh I, this is really awesome film. It is one of the best films of the year, and it got horribly, horribly reamed in all the acting categories. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and say, as much as I love Scarlett Johansson, and I love her, she is awesome. <laughs> she is absolutely awesome. She is gorgeous and talented and way, way way overdue for some Oscar love. Even loved her in Eight-Legged Freaks. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun little movie, actually. But, <laughs> but in particular, Sodom Park, but also Hyjin Jung and Yo Jong Jo and a couple others. I saw Jojo Rabbit over the weekend, and Miss Johansson is wonderful in the film. But one of the actresses from Parasite or Jennifer Lopez from Hustlers should have had that spot. Absolutely should have had that spot. There is no way that they can justify that particular nomination unless they were just desperately trying to make it up to her for yeah. all the snubs before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they really should have gone with one of the others. The acting in Parasite is phenomenal, and it just should have been up. But at any rate, uh, check out our video this week about people who really should have been, who were roles that were snubbed by Oscar. That's going to be my lead into that video. But Parasite itself is a wonderful film. If you haven't seen it, you do owe it to yourself to watch it before the Oscars so you know what all the fuss is about. And it, well, deserves the fuss. So, there you go. <laughs> Alright. <coughs> so my last one it's just gonna top that by by oh, yeah. means. We're talking of course about the blockbuster film which 
that no was one snubbed by, <laughs> it was snubbed for all the awards it should have been up for every award at the Oscars including international film because it's just that good and short film and documentary <laughs> which is Terminator Dark Fate mm -hmm. this was a film that had people's hopes way up it could only disappoint at the end of the day. Sounds like most Terminator films. It seems like it. <laughs> Matter of fact, to me, Terminator was an excellent kind of horror action film. Mm -hmm. And they had a very good action sequel. Mm -hmm. And that was it. <laughs> there are many Terminator movies after mm -hmm. the second one. But none that I would consider excellent films. Yeah. There are, they are watchable. I enjoyed Salvation, but I wouldn't call it a top-notch film. Like I said, they're watchable films. Mm -hmm. I have no... I don't hate any of the ones I've seen. I've seen mm -hmm. all but Dark Fate. Mm -hmm. And I don't hate any of them. Mm -hmm. They were reasonably entertaining films. Mm -hmm. But really and truly, if it had ended on the mm -hmm. second film, it would have probably done itself a favor. <laughs> and incidentally, this is another uh, one opportunity to... Uh, say check out uh, movies galore for the terminator discussion from oh, yes. what, about three we did months, do, four yeah months we had ago. it like what Hall was it halloween or i it don't was, remember it wasn't or was it november i think it was november oh films we were thankful for yes that's what it was oh but you know it, again mm -hmm. it is what it is mm -hmm. i will probably get it eventually when it mm -hmm. goes on sale on black friday because mm -hmm. i have all the rest of them mm -hmm. It's just, it's one of those things. It's like any of the other ones I'm obligated to get. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, it's just like, eventually I would be obligated to get a Sayuki Reload Blast Essential Blast, which, who knows when that will be. Who knows? Uh, or the Lupin set. Well, you're or obligated the, or, anyway, Monogatari. because Funimation claims it's essential. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> but that's all we've got mm -hmm. for you this time. Yes. Tell us in the comments what you think is cool. Did we miss something? Mm -hmm. We do miss some things that are on the underground mm -hmm. as far as releasing is concerned. Mm -hmm. And we like to hear about those releases. Mm -hmm. Of course, give our video a like, mm -hmm. comment, subscribe, and of course, share. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>